So there's this guy, okay? And his name is Mark Dice. And I'm gonna be honest, in spite of him being like a massive conservative YouTuber and uh, content creator, I don't really know much about him. I have to say, just based on the dead, lifeless expression that he's giving me here, I'm not getting like the best first impression, but I guess we all kind of look like that sometimes. Anyway, the Marxist plot to turn kindergartners into drag queens revealed. And the first thing I think of when I see this is, is this satire? Is this a satire title? I genuinely can't tell. You know, this looks like the, the queer agenda to make purple marshmallows and Lucky Charms turn my milk pink to make my children gay or something like that. It, it, it kind of, it feels like it's making fun of itself a little bit, a little bit of satire there, but people in chat are telling me that this is entirely on board for him and that Mark Dice is insane and that he did conspiracy work and blah, blah. Okay, well, all right, let's take a look then, huh? Well, it's June, so the annual onslaught of Marxist propaganda hit like a tsunami. It Winning. used to be called Gay Pride Month, but that wasn't inclusive enough because there are bisexuals and transgender Ooh. people and pansexuals, whatever the hell that is, and they all- Hey, hold on. Don't impugn me directly. Also, pansexual and bisexual basically just mean the same thing. I have no idea. You could Google it if you want to, by the way. Like, if, you, if there's ever a term you hear, and you don't know what it means, you can actually just Google it. And you'll get answers on that, you know? What does that even mean? Pansexual? What does that even mean? I, I haven't looked into it, and I haven't made any effort to investigate that question myself, but... ...whatever the hell that is, and they all must be celebrated because they're incredible heroes. Sure. Any disagreement about Based. this, and it's considered to be hate speech. The most ridiculous so far... Wait, this guy is... Wait, this guy is completely buttfuck insane, isn't he? Alright, wait, hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, is this the American Paul Joseph Watson? Oh, my God. Wait. Uh, Far-right, hard conspiracy bent, really, really cringy and out of touch. All the content is so insane that it looks like it could be satire, but it's not. I don't know, maybe. So far, and it's only two days into this disaster, so no God lips. knows what else is going to happen. Is Kellogg's new LGBT cereal Based. together with Pride? I'm serious. This is actually real. Cool. The limited edition LGBT cereal consists of what appear to be Fruit Loops in the shapes of hearts, and on the back of the box, instead of crossword puzzles or I just want to say I really like this scary music as we're, as he's zooming in on like a purple cereal box where it says we all belong together and like the. Like the, this, this nefarious ambient music playing in the background. Treasure maps. Kids are taught about their preferred pronouns. He, her, she, him. Wait, are they? Wait, what does that text say? Hold on. Altogether, cereal is a symbol of belonging no matter how you look, where you're from, or who you love. Okay, wait. So they're not telling you your pronouns. They're, they're, they're being supportive? We believe that all young people and those young at heart deserve an environment where they can grow up to be their best selves. That's why we've joined forces with GLAAD, G-L-A-A-D, by going purple on Spirit Day. I don't know what Spirit Day is. Is that just like June? I don't know. To stand up against bullying in all forms and support a more accepting world for the LGBTQ youth. It's just an anti-bullying advert. I don't know why he said that it was making, giving kids their pronouns. He, her, she, him, they, them. And there's a few spots for the kids to come up with their own pronouns. Sure. Boxes are for cereal, not people, they say. No matter who you are, who you love, or what pronouns you use, you're too awesome to fit into a box. <laughs> All they wanted was the right to be married, they said. And now Tony the... <laughs> the, uh, the gays said they just wanted marriage. And now we get you you give them an inch and they'll take the mile. Okay, you give them the legal right to marry, and now they have cereal boxes. First of all, um, in terms of like civic rights, I feel like marriage is probably a few steps above representation on cereal boxes. It's just my opinion though. And second of all, I don't I don't think the gays did this. I think corporate marketing managers did this to make money off of the gay. I have this speech every single time, but like it's funny because these conservatives will extol the virtue of capitalism at every possible opportunity, but then whenever capitalists realize they can make more money by appealing to the ideological enemy of the people who like capitalism, all of a sudden they turn into the most 
staunch anti-free market lunatics you can imagine. Like, hey, you know, anti-free market based. You, you hate gay people so much, you completely reverse all of your economic positions just to keep them from being on cereal boxes, you know? Ugh, God. Tiger is teaching your third grader that maybe he's a girl and needs new pronouns. Let That's not what was on the box, though. The box was just an anti-bullying message. What? Hey, here, hey, if you're a conservative, this is a little tip, okay? If, if the, if the guy is showing, if the, if the YouTube video is showing you, like, really spooky stuff, and all the spooky stuff is, like, pictures of cereal boxes, and then the guy says, and, uh, and, and then, what was the exact language that he used? And now Tony the Tiger is teaching your third grader that maybe he's a girl and needs new pronouns. If there was anything on the box saying that actually the people reading this are girls and need new pronouns, trust me, he would have shown it in the video, okay? Don't just assume he's telling the truth, just because it's like, here, here's the box. Now, trust me, somewhere on this box, they are saying that if you're reading this, you're trans now, you know? Lego has also released their first ever LGBTQ plus set for Pride Month this Based. year because... They too want to indoctrinate Is there an argument in here? Sesame Street has posted happy pride messages on all of their social media accounts because, well, you know why. Hi, my name's Ellen Pontiff. I'm actually going to be one of the drag queens reading for Drag Queen Storytime. So apparently to a lot of people in this room, I'm the big boogeyman. But I'm here to let cool. you know that this event is something that's going to be very beautiful. And for the children and the people that support it are going to realize that this is going to be the grooming of the next generation. This is going to be the grooming of the next <laughs> Okay. All right. You got him. You you got that. Okay. That was my dude. I, that This guy, one word. You had one job. This guy went to bed the, 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 the night afterwards going like, oh, God. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I actually sympathize with this dude so hard because I misspeak constantly. I swap I swap out names and places and times all the time. So I sympathize with this guy so hard right now. Because again, Drag Queen Time Story Hour or whatever it's called is literally just like somebody in costume reads to a bunch of kids and parents. Like, that's it. It's like, it might as well just be like a Halloween event. It's just... Like, that's it. It's just in costume, you know? Um, so uh, this guy was probably thinking in his head, like, the conservatives think we're all groomers. And then he, like, said it out loud. I don't know. But, uh, you know, we got him. It's funny. This is the first time I've seen this clip. I would have expected to have seen it broadcast on every far-right social media account, you know? Maybe it was, and I just didn't see it. The next generation. Of course, many, if not most, Fortune 500 corporate social media accounts have changed their avatars to incorporate their company logo with rainbows well wait but the first article that you just showed right there at the end of the rainbow corporate lgbt marketing avatars to incorporate companies are rolling out the rainbow carpet for pride month but are they really safe for lgbt employees so in the examples that are being provided here it's pretty clear that this is just something corporations are doing like for their own sake and not something that's being done as like a sincere expression of solidarity with queer people what is the narrative that's being pushed here Incorporate their company logo with rainbows. Well, that is for all of their accounts in Western countries. Uh -huh. Most of these brands have separate social media accounts for each different country. And so the United States, the UK, Canada, all of those accounts have been changed. Uh -huh. But what a surprise, the brand accounts in the Middle East have not. Look at this, here's Mercedes in the USA, the UK, Canada, but Mercedes Middle East doesn't support the LGBT community. <laughs> now let's think for a second. Why might that be? Let's just, let's consider for a moment, like let's really think for a second. Why would corporations performatively support queer people in countries where queer people are generally accepted, but not in countries where they're not? Let's really take a second to contemplate this, okay? I wonder if it has something to do with the free market. <laughs> you know? I wonder if there might be an economic incentive driving this. Jesus, how can, how can any conservative look at this and continue to believe that there's some kind of like ideological bias on the part of these corporations to determinately push like queer messaging or something rather than it just being like a branding or marketing thing? 
And I wonder why. BMW did the same thing, uh -huh. except for, well, the Saudi Arabia BMW but Left account. these notice. And that's because Muslims, unlike the vast majority of Christians, won't just sit idly by and allow their culture to be undermined. Or uh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Remember, okay, this isn't an indication that Muslims are reactionary in their parts of the world. It's actually an indication that they're based and red-pilled. This is why, again, why do the far right in the West hate Muslims so much? They want all of the same shit. All the, like, far right Muslim governments in the Middle East, they want all of the same shit. Like, the identical stuff. I have no idea why they are so, uh, why they're so ideologically opposed. If anything, it's more honest because they're admitting they basically want the same stuff and it's just team sports, you know? So how do you guys, uh, do you, what do you guys, do you think this guy is going to explain how their culture is being destroyed by gay people? Or is it he just going to say it and like assume it, you know? Hey, Mark Dice, my dude, the majority of people in this country, in my country, uh, are cool with queer shit. If you want, you can move to Saudi Arabia. In fact, you took, so hey, Saudi Arabia, okay? Traditional gender roles, fan of Donald Trump. Why not go over there? It's, you know, come. Come on, you're being like a huge pussy right now. Like, why are you, why are you staying here, living with our cucked, feminized men and our feminist man women? Okay, just move over to Saudi Arabia, bro. Or changed without actually saying or doing something about it. The 501c3 tax exempt churches in the United States don't want to lose their tax exempt status and upset the IRS Based. by preaching the truth they take their 30 preaching the truth the, the they had the true knowledge that the gays were bad but then the irs was like no you have to push the heretical yeah why is the piano so loud um wow this guy is actually really fucking stupid i didn't actually know it's not just that the stuff that he's saying is dumb yeah it comes off really derivative it also just like he just looks like low iq like the way he's talking you know what i mean he just looks like a really stupid and angry person who just talks into a camera with like no planning thought or coherence. You know what I mean? This is a silver in the form of not having to pay income tax and in exchange they don't get politically active because well that would be a violation of the IRS's 501c3 tax code. Based. Oh you didn't know that there are strings attached to virtually every church in America being tax exempt and being yeah none of them should be tax exempt listen to this bitch complaining like it seems to, it's like uh yeah all churches get tax exempt status for some reason and all they have to do is not be thinly veiled political organizations under the guise of a religious uh, uh doctrine oh and even then the irs by the way does not police that very hard because religious organizations do politics all the time being classified as a charity you just thought that the government was not collecting what they should render unto Caesar just because they like what the church is doing? You what? know, if Jesus were to come back today, he what? would vomit on most of these <laughs> churches for being cowardly sellouts. So now we have people like this who have access to children. This is what? Ari, Gwendolyn, and Brynifer. Okay. They are in a polyamorous relationship, and they all parent Hazel and Sparrow. We have a two-year-old antigender baby oh, and a 10-year-old okay. who is non-binary. How is there not a national outrage about this? What? what? Why? What? <laughs> their, their what? <laughs> what? Why would there be? Uh, wait, first of all, there is. It's you guys. And second of all, why is there? <laughs> what is... What, 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 what's wrong? Can you explain? How are these people not in prison? What? How is it that no Republicans have been speaking out against this kind of thing? Wait, Instead, they do! Senator what? Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham traveled halfway around the world to a foreign country to promise them that we'll be giving them more of our tax money. Oh, is Mark Dice a full-on Nazi? I was thinking conspiratorial neocon, but with Israel, like the, the die for Israel line, this might be full on Nazi. This is full on Nazi stuff. Ah, I should have known. Muslim Jack Dorsey, uh, Borg uh, 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 Zuckerberg, Chinese Biden. But this guy's just crying? This, this guy seems like a little lazy, a little bit shooed in. Oh, Zuckerberg. I get it. I get it. He's a Nazi who conflates Jews with reptilians. Man, conservatives really will like go up with anything, will they?
the funny thing, the especially funny thing is that, like, he's willing to completely, like, right now he's shit-talking the Republican Party and, like, for supporting Israel. But Donald Trump is, like, hardcore Israel supporter, you know? Hillary supporters endorse Sharia law in America. But doesn't he want Sharia law? Isn't he, like, damn, dude, Islam is based. Does any of this mean anything? This guy might be a rabbit hole that I was unprepared to go down. I think we just have to finish this video, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, he's got, like, the pussy hat. I, I don't know. This... This, uh, I don't know. We, we, we might be a couple layers deep with this one. This next clip, I had to triple check to verify triple that it was check. actually real. Hey! When I first saw it, I hoped that it was just a parody. I prayed that the Marxist hadn't gotten this far, but this Blues Clues clip, which is a cartoon aimed at children ages three to five, Base. is real. It's time for a pride parade. Copyright. Copyright. DMCA. Patrols, just know I had nothing to do with this. I am contributing meaningful commentary. The big parade, come on, friends! Yes, that is a drag queen designed to get your five-year-old to sing along with them about Based. how great gay pride parades are. Based. And that was just a small sample of the show. I warned you, the Marxist propaganda was incoming like a tsunami. And on. Disney Channel classic The Proud Family getting woke reboot featuring internet racial gay dads. This coming from the school of journalism where like adding women to games make them woke. Do you guys remember what was it what was the game? Was it that Gears of War game where like a woman or something got added and people freaked out? The Gamergate like remnant stuff isn't as popular these days. Was it Gears 4? I've never played a Gears of uh, Gears of War game. But yeah, it's, um Battlefield? No, I think it happened to Gears of War 2. Or am I thinking of a different one? Yeah, Battlefield either. Yeah, yeah, There was, it was like Battlefield 5 or whatever. It, yeah, and there was a woman on the front. And like, it was a months-long drama parade. It was insane. Um, yeah, Woke Reboot or whatever. The word Woke is lost on me. Yeah, of course. Just never never forget, okay? Like, the, the people who use Woke, like, in that way, just have a seething and often internally unaddressed hatred of minorities, okay? It doesn't actually mean anything. It, it's it's literally the, the joke where it's like, uh, you know, you've got, you've got two, you got two kinds of games, okay? You got two kinds of games. You got ones entirely filled by straight white men, and you have political games, okay? Two genders, male and political, two races, white and political, you know. Disney Plus, Disney streaming service, just rebooted a new show or about to reboot a new show called The Proud Family, Based. which you guessed it, now has LGBT characters in there to teach your children about maybe changing their pronouns. The Rugrats, another- He's really fixated on the pronouns thing. Like, does he have any other jokes or any other like lines that he could deliver, you know? Because he keeps like, uh, this cereal box will make them change their pronouns. This Blue's Clues Pride Parade will make them change their pronouns. This proud family reboot will make them change their print. Like, come on, I'm not even like homophobic or transphobic. I can think of like way meaner shit than that. I feel like you're really phoning it in for this one. Does he care? He doesn't care. He thinks his audience is dumb and flash will eat up anything. Is he wrong? No, I think he's completely right. I think that might just be his audience. Look at that like to dislike ratio, like 40k likes to 200 dislikes. That is insane. That is an unbelievable uh, ratio of favoritism cartoon for kids also decided to make one of the characters gay because well you know why this is gonna be the grown wait hold on this character wasn't she already gay y you mean the the butch rollerblade lesbian no she had a husband that was what's the lesbian equivalent of a beard yeah she was what's the term queer coded yeah no she was, what's what's the name of this character yeah, she had a bush, okay? What's the name of this character? Her husband was also gay. They were both each other's beard. Based. What's the name of the character? Come on. Betty. Look, I believe that gay people should be able to look like whatever they want or whatever, but holy fuck, okay? There are limits to how hard you can, like, lesbian code somebody before this shit basically becomes canon. <laughs> like, oh my god. Is this, isn't this just... Wouldn't, if anything, wouldn't this be, like less secret gay agenda because now they're being open with it as opposed to back in like the 90s or whenever Rugrats aired when they were being covert and making her obviously lesbian without actually stating it. Isn't this better? Is Howard, uh, Howard, okay. Jesus Christ, why are all the characters in this show so ugly? Here's Howard, okay? Howard reminds me of uh, a combination of Mr. Burns and Skinner, you know? I feel like 
I feel like, yeah. It's just the art style. Yeah, the art style, I just, I haven't seen Rugrats in like 20 years. Wait, did I say Skinner? Smithers, sorry. Smithers and uh, Mr. Burns. Yeah, like both of them together, you know? Yeah. Well, good for both of them. You know why? This is going to be the grooming of the next generation. And now there are a growing number of plastic so surgeons in the United States who are allowed to keep their medical licenses, who are performing what they call gender nullification surgery for people who identify as gender non-binary. Oh, yes, it means what you... Wait, gender non-binary? Wait, so what? It, it, it makes people eunuchs? Is that the... I don't know if that's the appropriate term anymore, but basically... You're non-binary. Oh, yes, it means what you think it means. Here's one of them, Davis Plastic Surgery. Dr. Davis is just a handful of North American Spooky surgeons music. who have been performing gender confirmation surgeries for more than 20 years. However, not all gender patients desire a complete transition. For his gender non-conforming patients, Dr. Davis also performs gender nullification also known as male to eunuch or smoothie oh, procedure. You can't say you're there. Wait, there have now been three make sure to subscribe pop-up notifications and all of them have been different styles, okay? I need to be more shameless. Procedure includes a complete penectomy or whatever you call that, a reduction. Oh my God. The wait, how do you to wait, leave the air how do you pronounce that? The procedure includes a complete Penectomony, penectomony. Or, uh, you call that a reduction. Oh my god! The goal is to leave the area as a smooth, unbroken transition from the abdomen to the groin. Meanwhile, isn't this isn't this godly? Doesn't this bring us closer to God? Well, popular science magazine declared. Wait, 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 hold, wait, hold on. Okay, this is a pattern that I've noticed with a lot of videos like this. Okay, they don't even attempt to make any arguments. This video has not made a single prescriptive statement the entire time. We have watched pretty much the entire video. There has not been a single attempt at making an argument in favor of or against anything that's being displayed here. This is one of the reasons, so this is, all right, we're getting essentialist. So conservatives have, uh, as we all know, a basically lower brain functions. It's just a product of their upbringing and learning, okay? That's why education increases IQ. One of the things that conservatives are much, much, much more reactive about than, than non-conservatives is uh, innate fear and disgust response, which is one of the reasons why when you look at conservative content online, very, very often there is this effort. There's not even an effort to make arguments. You just show things that your audience will have like an intuitive repulsion towards, and that's it. It's just outrage porn. Conservatives love outrage porn way more than, than any other political group. Like, sure, like liberals and lefties do it too, don't get me wrong, but not even close to the same extent. For a conservative, they just find something they like, yeah, they have like an intuitive dislike of it, and that's all they need. And you'll find, by the way, even people confident enough to argue their positions against me on stream, usually they don't actually have any more than that, you know? Like, if you talk with a transphobe for long enough, it becomes really, really evident that all of their political opinions were derived after they just felt weird about trans people, you know? A lot of people with regards to interracial uh, uh, marriage or interracial sex, exact same thing. They just have like a fundamental rejection uh, of it. And then afterwards they pile up arguments. It's called post hoc justification. It's a, well, it's a fallacious form of thinking, a flawed form of thinking where you get your conclusions first and you find your reasons afterwards. Like all those people who just sit around all day looking for articles of black people doing crime, they just inherently like it. Yeah, they do. Because when they get angry, they feel a sense of righteous outrage. That's why when you look at conservative articles and you take a look at like how they respond to crime, it's always some cringy like Judge Dredd bullshit. If I was there, I would stop that animal's head into the dirt. And it's like a black guy like shoplifting a candy bar or something, you know? They do that because they, they, they train their brains to respond to this constant and unjustified outrage with fantasies of like moral indignation that they act out in their heads. It's really, really weird. No, Tron Panda TKS, I love you, but unfortunately what I'm describing right now is objectively something conservatives do more. No, I promise you, if you take a look at like Fox News comment sections or Breitbart or any of the far right like news articles, the behavior that they engage in is categorically different from the behavior that left-leaning people engage in. There are crazy, spiteful motherfuckers on the left, people who just, like, look at... Actually, I don't even think this is a thing that happens that much. There are really spiteful people on the far left, but 
are there really spiteful people on the far left who will just spend hours of every day looking at and saving videos of like rich people being bad and then fantasize about giving them the wall? Maybe some, but I'm talking about a lot of conservatives. Remember that that like boomer, the boomer like rap lord that I debated? That guy actually had an archive of videos of black people committing crimes in his phone. Remember? The guy who talked really, really fast had the southern twang. The southern rap god, yeah. Remember in that debate, he was bragging about having videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P Paul Joseph Watson's Twitter feed is exactly like that too. It's just outrage porn. Um, it is a cognitive deficiency on the part of conservatives that you just do not find elsewise, you know? The only example I can think of, Vosh, are like black nationalists who instinctually hate white people. I think you mean black separatists, but guess what? Black separatists are also conservative. Remember that uh, the, uh, the, the lady on TikTok who we responded to the other day? A conservative. I'm sorry, I bait for outcomes here. If your like super progressive like arguments lead you to ethno-nationalism and apartheid uh, as conclusions, then those are far-right conclusions that you've led yourself down. Um, I'm much more interested in those cases and like you can justify what you believe all you want, but like if the end outcome is identical to what like white nationalists would want, that's a far right argument right there, you know? Or at least a far right conclusion. People think beef is manly, and that's a big problem. We can't lower our meat consumption without rethinking masculinity. This doesn't even yes, have if you anything like to, grill to do. Out and eat hamburgers or steaks or God forbid, work out at the gym to build your muscles up and eat animal protein to repair them, then they consider you to be part of the problem of society. It's funny because he's actually making the point. The, the article, I assume, is making the argument that meat consumption is inefficient and destructive in many ways. And this guy is saying, uh, well, if I can't eat my meat, then how am I supposed to be a man? Um, he's kind of making the argument <laughs> right there. Uh, to which my answer, I guess, would be, if you're not a man without eating meat, then you're kind of, you kind of suck as a guy, my dude, you know? It's not fun anymore. It was fun about five years ago when these were like isolated instances, but now they've become ingrained into the culture and just daring to speak out against them puts you at risk of getting your social media accounts banned. It's so much worse than I can get into here on YouTube. I gotta walk a fine line and they probably- Yeah, I really had to hold back in this video, you know? That's, that's actually true. He did hold back in this video because he never actually made any prescriptive statements. He basically just made like, he just like showed news articles and, and videos and with like scary music behind them, you know? They consider that I've crossed it. So you really should get my books in paperback from amazon.com by clicking. Okay. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Nice fella. Um, anyway, yeah, that, wow, that dude is crazy. Or at least he uh, knows his audience responds to crazy. So he performs it.